Hello, uh, welcome to the video of our CVPR 23 paper, where is my wallet modeling object proposal set for egocentric visual query localization. The task assumes that we have a camera mounted on human's head and the camera records our daily activities uh, to its local storage as an episodic memory so that whenever we are looking for something such as the wallet, the AI agent will search in the local storage and predict or localize our personal belongings. Uh, in this work, we study the current uh, baselines and provide a more efficient and effective uh, solution. Our main idea is to design a conditional detector, and we train this detector with a balanced sample. Then we can apply the more advanced uh, conditional detectors on the VQ task, and we observe the improvement in all the cases. For example, in the easy cases, we can reduce the confidence score of the false positives to almost zero and we are able to deal with the cases when the task is moderately hard. In the hard task, our model still works better than the baseline. Okay, this figure basically shows our main model architecture. We have the input of a video query. This is basically the object that we are looking for. And we also have the video recording. Uh, it works as an episodic memory as in the local storage. Uh, we firstly leverage uh, ResNet 50 as our visual backbone to encode the visual informations. We also apply the region proposal network to predict a, a set of proposals from each single frame of the video recording. On the bottom branch, uh, when we get the query in the uh, feature representation, we train a conditional projection layer. This conditional projection will create a unique uh, transformation depends on the queries. Then we apply this transformation uh, on the proposal set, basically on each uh, feature representation of the proposal. Then we take those unique proposal embeddings as a set, uh, send it to the input of the uh, multi head attention block. And the last layer of the block is going to uh, classify and localize each proposal. We call this uh, architecture as our conditional uh, detector. To train this conditional detector better, we studied different uh, ways to have a balanced samples. For example, we propose our pos positive uh, unlabeled frame sampling way and to uh, acquire, to collect, the, uh, to collect the visual object in different uh, camera view. And we also have the negative unlabeled frame sampling uh, to introduce the negatives and the hard negatives from the unlabeled frame. We also propose to collect a balanced proposal set to make sure the whole proposal set can also have a balance between positive and negatives by randomly uh, masking the foreground object, shown in the picture below. After training the conditional object detector, we first evaluate on the query object detection task on every single positive frames. But to the end, we need to evaluate on the real problem. So we have the VQ2D settings, which evaluate the model in a video and we also have VQ3D settings, which evaluate it in the real world coordinate. Let's see our result. When we apply this new conditional object detector with a, a more balanced uh, training methodology, we can get a direct uh, performance scan on the VQ uh, object detection task. And this improvement uh, consistently propagates to the real evaluation uh, in the VQ2D and the VQ3D tasks. We also compare our method in different model architecture designs. For example, we have the original CMRCN in the baseline, and we have the uh, transformer setup that we take the query object and all the uh, proposals equally uh, in the transformer. And uh, we, the, our final comparison is by using this uh, conditional projection, and it is to create a unique transformation based on the queries and apply the transformation to each token in the proposal set. And what we find is interesting. Uh, first of all, uh, the performance improvement is not, is not that uh, significant, although the uh, cocoa former, which means uh, the, con the conditional project uh, is somehow more advanced. However, when we compare different sampling methods, we find this balanced training is more critical to this problem. For example, when we have this uh, normal view positives and we can directly improve a consistent performance scan in all the evaluation metrics. Also, we compare the impact of the negative training samples in the frame level and in the uh, instance level. And interestingly, we find by using negative samples will be uh, somehow detrimental to the object detection task. For example, we can see the both the matrix drop down when we apply these uh, negative samples. However, this, those negatives are super helpful in VQ2D localizations. And we can find also their detection performance goes worse on uh, the localization performance gets better. Uh, this is the task bias or the task gap between detection and the real localization problem. 
Uh, another advantage of the uh, conditional projection layer is that uh, uh, the model is able to uh, take in multimodal information as the input. This means we let the AI agent know that we are looking for a wallet. Uh, then the uh, textual information is definitely is definitely also helpful for all the tasks. Our method also generalizes well in a similar task called uh, few shot object detection, and especially in the extremely few cases where we have only one, three, or five shots. Uh, where, where we only have one, three, or five images available. And since our model doesn't need the novel classes fine tuning, because again, because we are training the conditional projection layer, and we can observe also great performance in those different scenarios. Towards the end, uh, I would like to show uh, some examples to show how the task look like. On this corner, we visualize the query object, the belonging we are looking for. And in these uh, videos, we also show that the object is only uh, exists in partial of the frames. Uh, if we have a look at the model performance of the baseline, the top row, and our methods, uh, in this easy case, both of them are works pretty well. Uh, we have the blue curves to show the uh, confidence score on each frames, and we all have the high prediction on the positive frames. Here is a more challenging examples uh, when we need to look for the blue beans. There are multiple blue beans in the video, uh, but we are looking for the exact blue beans uh, we showed from the example. Uh, both of the methods is able to localize the correct ones. However, the baseline model got confused with uh, different beans, such as the black beans in a different room. Uh, now we have a look at the curves. Uh, we can see there are multiple peaks and only one of them is the uh, true positive. Okay, thanks for your attention. Uh, if you are interested in our work, uh, welcome to our post session on Tuesday morning in the hall 247. And also many thanks to the contribution of the collaborators. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>